Hi there, Steve here with Hobby Farm Guys. Today we bring you another video in our Spotlight series where we turn the spotlight on a particular breed of Hobby Farm animal. Today, the most popular meat bird in North America, the Cornish Cross Chicken. Click the like button for the video to continue. Just kidding, the video is going to play no matter what, but please click that like button anyway. The Cornish Cross is a well-known but often misunderstood breed of chicken. Back in the 1940s, chicken was an occasional treat, not a mainstay of many diets. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, together with the largest grocery store chain at the time, the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, better known as the A&P, they partnered to stage the first ever Chicken of Tomorrow contest, with the goal of producing superior meat-type chickens. Chickens were hatched and raised by a third-party hatchery, and then they were slaughtered and rated in several categories. Henry Saglio's White Plymouth Rocks and the Red Cornishes from Vandress Hatchery both excelled, and these birds were eventually bred to produce what we commonly call chicken today, the Cornish Cross. Often misunderstood and frequently maligned, these birds are sometimes referred to as Franken chickens. A common misconception with Cornish Cross is that they're somehow genetically modified or GMO. They are not, right? So the Cornish Cross, they're simply a cross between two breeds that are selected for their traits and then were selectively bred over time. Well, you could buy Cornish chickens and White Plymouth Rock chickens and cross them. You would end up with a Cornish cross, maybe even a good one, but you likely wouldn't have anything close to what's being sold as Cornish cross today. After decades of intentional breeding, today's Cornish cross is very different from those original birds. And that's not all. Now there are several Cornish cross strains with different genetics and their breeding is veiled in secrecy. The most common are the Cobb 500, Ross 308, and Ross 708. All three are white feathered with yellow legs, but the Cobb 500 has a rounder appearance and sometimes has black flecks. Both the Cobb 500 and Ross 308 are selected for their plentiful breast meat and are often listed as Jumbo Cornish Cross. The Ross 708 has more of a balanced distribution of meat instead of being breast heavy. They start off growing more slowly, but then catch up with the other strains in the later weeks. You may see these called Cornish Rock. If you want a bird that produces more breast meat, you'll want to find Ross 308 or Cobb 500. But if you prefer the dark meat, look for the Ross 708. So years of intentional breeding has created a chicken that can grow extremely fast, produce large breasts and bigger drumsticks, and have a good feed to gain efficiency. And taste delicious, right? Other traits sought for in breeding have been ease of plucking and tolerance for confinement. However, while some traits have been improved, others have been ignored. Namely, things like hardiness, foraging ability, and reproduction. These birds get so big so fast that they often don't survive long enough to breed and raise young, let alone the fact that their enormous size can make natural breeding difficult as it is with many commercial turkeys. So a self-sustaining flock isn't the norm here. Buying chicks every spring is. Cornish crosses don't tend to forage well. They often prefer to sit next to the feeder and wait for it to be refilled. So you'll want to plan on buying feed and you'll need a higher protein level, which will be more expensive. But on the flip side, you won't be buying feed for long, and they're fairly efficient at converting feed to chicken, with about two pounds of feed consumed for every pound of growth. Cornish crosses are also not known to be the healthiest of chickens. Part of this is related to how they're often raised in close quarters, but also in part due to their physiology. These birds are designed to put on weight fast, as in like six pounds in six weeks type fast. Their bodies have a hard time keeping up. Muscular, skeletal, cardiac, and digestive systems are constantly trying to keep pace with a bird that is growing extremely fast. If they go too fast, their legs will literally break, being unable to support the mass of chicken meat on the bird. For this reason, offering free choice feed around the clock is discouraged. For the first five days, give them free access to feed around the clock. At the end of the fifth day, remove the feed for 12 hours. 12 hours later, put the feed back and allow them to eat at will for another 12 hours, and then remove the feed again that night. The exact timing doesn't matter as long as it's in 12 hour intervals and it's consistent from day to day. You'll continue this interval feeding until it's time to butcher those birds. Often people find that when the feed is removed at night, the chicks will begin eating sawdust or shavings. So be aware of what you use for litter. Somewhere in the two to four week range, they'll have feathered out and can be moved from the brooder to a grow out pen. Ensure they have shelter and protection from predators as they're susceptible to both heat and cold as well as predators. Ensure a steady supply of clean water. All that food and all that growth requires water, and they will drink lots of it. Another thing that there will be lots of? Poop. Even worse than your laying birds. These birds poop a lot, and with high protein levels, the poop is extra smelly, so be prepared for that. 
They don't need roosts. In fact, roosting leads to damage uh, due to the bird's massive size. They'll just nest on the ground. While often confined to a grout pen or a small tractor, a little room to roam will help provide at least some physical activity. While it needs to be secure, elaborate housing isn't usually required because these birds, well, they're only going to be around for a few weeks. Cornish crosses are typically butchered between six to nine weeks of age based on the variety and your preference for weight of the bird uh, at the time of processing. At nine weeks of age, males will be around 10 pounds and females around eight. So that's the Cornish cross. They're a little more labor intensive than other breeds, but in only a couple of months, you complete the process and have that freezer stocked with chicken and the rest of your summer or fall free to focus on other tasks around the farm. Have you tried raising Cornish crosses? What was your experience? Let us know by leaving us a comment below. Is there another meat breed you'd like us to spotlight? Or any breed? Let us know in the comments. Again, thanks for watching and until next time, happy hobby farming everyone.